Hi, I'm Charles with Clive Coffee, and today I'll be showing you how to set up your La Marzocco GS3 MP. Step one, inspect the box and the machine for damage. Remove your machine from its box and place it on a solid level surface. We recommend holding onto all of the packaging in boxes just in case you have to send the machine back for service or repair. Inspect the machine for any damage. If you find any, contact us immediately. Step two, water quality and plumbing in your machine. Before introducing any water to the machine, it's important to test it and make sure that it's adequately soft. Use the included water test strip to verify the softness of your water. Ideally, we're looking for a softness below 50 parts per million. For more information on water, take a look at clivecoffee.com water or click the link in the description of this video. If you plan to use the machine's internal water reservoir, simply fill the reservoir now. If you plan to direct plumb the machine, however, we'll start by removing the machine's left side panel. Start by unscrewing these chrome caps and using a wrench or pliers to remove these nuts. Now the panel can simply be pulled off the side of the machine. Inside, you'll find the machine's rotary pump. In order to switch to using a direct water line, we'll first need to remove the line coming from the water reservoir. To do this, we'll first remove the compression clip attaching the rubber water line to the machine's reservoir. This is most easily done by using a pair of pliers to pinch the clip and slip off the tubing. You can now set aside the reservoir as you'll no longer need it. Next, we'll use a wrench to unthread this tubing attached to the machine's pump. Once unthreaded, you can simply pull the line through to remove it from the machine. Now take the braided line included with the machine and route it up through this hole in the bottom. Hand tighten it to the open end of the pump and then use a wrench to give it an extra half turn. Ensure that the braided line is not kinked in such a way that restricts water flow. Now that that's done, you can simply reattach the panel to the side of the machine. Step three, turning on your machine and filling the boilers. Plug in your machine and turn it on using this switch around back. Normally, the GS3 expects to detect a water reservoir beneath the machine, so if you direct plumb, we'll need to tell it not to look for it. To do this, we'll need to put the machine into standby mode. Press and hold the function button, and then press the power button. Now press and hold the function button for about 10 seconds to enter the settings menu. Press the function button to cycle through the different settings until you reach tank. Then press the minus button to switch the setting to not present. Once you've done that, simply continue pressing the function button until you've cycled your way out of the menu and back to the off screen. Now press and hold the function button and press the power button again to turn the machine back on. With the power on, the machine will automatically begin filling and heating the boilers. You'll know the machine has come up to temperature and is ready to pull shots when the PID display reads a temperature of about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and the steam boiler pressure gauge reads above 1.5 bar. At this point, your machine is ready to pull your first shots. With coffee in your portafilter, lock it into the group head and simply move the paddle to the left to begin pulling espresso. A few tips before we go. If you'd like to change the machine's brew boiler temperature, that can be done in the machine's settings menu. To get there, simply press and hold the function button for about 10 seconds until it says T setting. To cycle through the different menu options, press the function button again until you reach coffee boiler temp. To increase or decrease the temperature, use the plus and minus buttons. Once you have the temperature you want, simply press the function button to cycle out of the menu. Your setting will automatically be saved and the machine will begin adjusting to that new temperature. There's a bit of a learning curve when it comes to using the machine's manual paddle. And a big part of that is finding its actual effective range of operation. About half the range will produce incredibly slow flow rates that aren't very effective. Starting at about half to two thirds of the way, you'll find flow rates that are good for pre-infusion. Any slower and water will be in contact with the top of the puck long before it reaches the bottom, resulting in uneven extractions. I like to start my shots right past this post on the machine's group head and then slowly ramp up the flow over the course of about 10 seconds. I highly recommend watching the flow rate from the group head after you've pulled a couple shots to get comfortable with going through the motions. From there, it's all about paying attention to your shot output while keeping an eye on that group pressure gauge. For more tips on pulling great shots, be sure to watch our Espresso Essentials video. For advice on steaming milk, watch our How to Steam Milk guide. If this video helped you set up your GS3, be sure to hit the like button. If you have any other questions, I'd be glad to field them in the comments below. For more coffee knowledge, tap subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.